In this video, we're going to finish talking about non-traditional resonance by looking at how a single bond can serve as an electron acceptor. In orbital terms, we say that the sigma star orbital can act as an electron sink or electron acceptor, and all of the ideas we've developed so far concerning non-traditional resonance, the importance of orbital overlap, the role of geometry, the strength of sources and sinks, all of these ideas will still apply when using the single bond as an electron acceptor. The sigma star acceptor is just one more element in our arsenal that we can use to recognize important resonance forms in organic molecules. Single bonds can act as electron sinks in non-traditional resonance forms. I'll just show you a quick example of this in the context of an isolated carbon-bromine bond which we might find in a structure. In curved arrow terms, we could draw a non-traditional resonance structure involving the sigma star orbital of the carbon-bromine bond by breaking the carbon-bromine bond and giving the electrons to the more electronegative atom in the pair. In orbital terms, the orbital that's interacting here is the sigma star orbital of the carbon-bromine bond. And you'll recall that this just looks like two large lobes of opposite phase on the outsides of the atoms. In this case, the lobe on carbon would be larger than the lobe on bromine. And two smaller lobes toward the center of the bond, again, with opposite phases. So the important point is that wherever the electrons of whatever source is interacting are landing, the orbital of the source needs to be able to interact with the large lobe of the sigma star orbital. The resulting resonance form generally contains the same charge on the atom that inherits the electrons from the source. So in this case, the carbon atom would have the same charge, but the charge on the other atom, which actually inherits the electrons, goes down by one, and that electron acceptor ultimately bears a new lone pair. In fact, you already know about several good sigma star sinks for resonance. Leaving groups are the most famous example of groups that bear low energy sigma star orbitals. We've already seen an example of one in the carbon bromine bond. Other examples include carbon chlorine, carbon iodine, carbon sulfonate. I'll use the example of the tosylate. These are all single bonds that bear low energy reactive sigma star orbitals. As before for the sigma sources, the strength of a sigma star sink is going to be a critical factor dictating the importance of a particular resonance structure. Here are two examples in which a CH bond can actually serve as an electron sink when it's in the presence and adjacent to an electron source with which it can interact. The top molecule is a fragment of the famous molecule NADH, which is a hydride source in bioorganic chemistry. The carbon H bonds that you see here, I'll highlight one of them in blue, are adjacent to a good electron source in the nitrogen here with the lone pair. Via the pi bond, we can draw a non-traditional resonance form that shows how the strongly donating nitrogen atom actually puts some partial negative charge on one of the hydrogens of the CH bond. This resonance form reveals that the hydrogen atom is actually a good nucleophile and bears some partial negative charge. Hydrogens that have this property of bearing some negative charge are called hydritic, and you sometimes hear this tendency of hydrogen being able to serve as a nucleophile referred to as hydricity, which is why it's the title of this slide. Another example of this in a smaller context is the formate anion that you see right here. Formate is interesting in that it's a pretty good reductant and hydride donor, and it can do this because the hydrogen atom actually bears some of the negative charge in this molecule. Via non-traditional resonance, we can illustrate how the hydrogen atom actually bears some negative charge and shares that negative charge with the oxygen atoms of formate. To close this lesson, I wanted to remind you of the importance of geometry and orbital overlap when it comes to both traditional and non-traditional resonance. So, Orbital overlap is critical for non-traditional resonance too. If the sigma orbital or the sigma star orbital cannot overlap properly with its source or sink, then the resonance arrows you're drawing are bogus. Here's an example of a constrained substrate where the resonance arrow I've drawn here in red is actually a bogus arrow. And I wanted to show you in three-dimensional terms with the orbitals overlaid why this arrow corresponds to poor orbital overlap. So I've drawn the arrow in blue overlaid on this three-dimensional structure and the question is why this is a bogus resonance arrow. To show you this, I'm going to rotate the structure so that the plane of the cation is perpendicular to the screen. And we can see that the CH bond that serves as the source here is also in that plane. 
Now we can draw the empty atomic orbital on the cation as perpendicular to the plane of the cation as we've always done before. And we see that the sigma orbital associated with the CH bond that's supposedly serving as the source is perpendicular to that orbital. And so there's both constructive and destructive overlap here resulting in no net orbital overlap meaning that the arrow that you see on the left in red is a bogus curved arrow. So don't forget to check, especially when the substrate is geometrically constrained, to make sure that the orbitals can overlap properly in both traditional and non-traditional resonance. When the substrate is unconstrained, it's usually true that bonds can rotate to accommodate proper orbital overlap. But in constrained substrates like this one, that's not the case.